to keep things going, um, we're going to move forward with Mitch Altman, who is quite a known name uh, by his title as CEO of Open Hardware Creator. Uh, please do come on stage. Briefly introduce Mitch. Um, Mitch is from San Francisco, and he's a San Francisco-based hacker and inventor, best known for creating the TV Be Gone, as featured speaker at hacker conferences and international expert on the hackerspace movement, and also for teaching introductory electronic workshops. So quite a good background. Um, he's also chief scientist and CEO of Cornfield Electronics. Uh, so Mitch joins us today to talk on open source hardware and on education. Here we go. So uh, this is my contact info. Please feel free to contact me anytime for any reason. I love helping people any way that I can. And um, uh, I'm going to go over, uh, oh wait, actually, is it okay if I take a photo? <laughs> You'll be on the internet forever, you know. <laughs> hey, everyone. Yeah. Cool. So, um, great. I'm going to go over just uh, really briefly a little bit about my background because it's uh, relevant for what I'm going to talk about and everything I do. Because um, uh, I think it's really important that we do things because it's meaningful to us. And this is the background of why stuff's meaningful for me. I grew up um, being totally bullied every day in school, getting beaten up, often while a gym teacher watched, and you know, life, life sucked. And it was total hell. I tried to escape into television. Television. Of course, that never works. So um, uh, I just, time went away. I watched the screen, and time went away, and I got fat and didn't learn anything. And that made me more of a target, only to want to escape into TV again when I got home. And that's called addiction. And um, it was a long road, and partly because of teachers supporting me, and I am talking about education as well as open hardware today, teachers are super, super important. Um, and with the help of them and other aspects of life, I ended up quitting TV and getting, getting rid of it in my home. And that was a first step in learning to live a life I love, which was a long road, but basically that was the first half of my life, okay? So um, uh, by the year 2003, TVs were popping up everywhere in public places. This force that I got rid of from my life was invading me again everywhere I went in public. Can you remember a time, can any of you remember a time when TVs were not in public places? It used to be the case, but they were all over in public places. I couldn't do anything about it but I could invent a TV remote control that could turn them all off. So I did. And um, it was really fun going around turning TVs off. And it turned out a lot of people really liked it. And I saw an opportunity, so I made a bunch of them. In 2004, it was the first day of sales, and I sold so many that my website crashed and I was uh, on national public radio in the US, on New York Times, on the front page of the um, uh, technology section. I was invited to Fox, <laughs> fucking Fox, to turn off all of the TV monitors in their studio while a lot, 14 million people watched. Anyways, it was quite a beginning. It changed my life forever for the better. And 15 years later, I'm still making a living from this totally bizarre project that I just did because I wanted one for me. <laughs> Thanks. So um, I uh, got invited to a lot of really interesting uh, events because of this, uh, including Hacker conferences, which I never really thought of before, but um, hacker conferences were totally amazing. I mean, here we're pretty much in one right now where there's lots and lots of people all sharing what they love, wanting to learn from each other. And I gave a talk on TV Be Gone, and this was my uh, second hacker conference, uh, the 23rd Chaos Communications Congress, which was in Berlin at the time. And uh, after the conference, people were like, why does it say patent on that? Patent? That gets in the way of innovation. Why are you doing that? And I'm like, well, I'm an inventor. My brother is a patent attorney. Of course, that's what inventors do. And I'm like, but, 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 but uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe someone will, will take the idea and only sell it for money. And anyways, it didn't really make sense. All the little things in my mind to justify it didn't make sense. And so afterwards, um, I made it open source. That was 
in 2007. And um, open source hardware really didn't exist at the time. Open source software, of course, did. But taking those same contact, uh, um, concepts and applying it to hardware made a lot of sense. All these people all over the world started helping me, and they were helping me already, so it was essentially open source, except for that patent thing in the way. Getting rid of that made even more people help. And then all these people that made it, I didn't make any money from that, but all those people told everybody about how incredibly cool this thing is, and that's PR that as a teeny little company, I could not afford. And um, of course, why am I doing this? <laughs> I'm doing this so that people will turn off TVs in public places and everywhere and have more time and live better lives. And when it's open source, more and more people are turning TVs off and making the world a better place for everybody. So that worked really, really well. Also at uh, hacker conferences, I got inspired to start uh, one of the early hacker spaces in the United States. Along with a few other people, we started some of the early hacker spaces in the United States. We all helped each other, and we helped a lot of others once they saw that we were successful to s uh, start more, and it started this whole hacker space movement, and now there's thousands in the world. And one of the things I did at NoiseBridge, starting really small, is teaching people to solder, one of the things I love. And um, that grew pretty big. And uh, I'll be teaching soldering here if anyone wants to join. It's tons of fun. And of course, if I'm teaching soldering, I want to have cool things for people to build. So I created a lot of open source um, uh, kits for people to make. First one being, of course, TV Be Gone kit, which turns off TVs at 50 meters away. And um, it's, it's just tons of fun. All these things are for beginners, but cool enough for anyone to make. I made a comic book, which of course is also free and open source. Anyone can download it for free in the language of your choice. This is what happens when you make things open source. People make it cooler, including other languages. Um, so hackerspaces are these amazing uh, environments. They're places with uh, doing anything, not just tech, but also lots of art and other things. Uh, but the main thing is there's a community of people supporting each other encouraging each other to explore and do things that are meaningful for each person. And when people find projects that are meaningful, of course they want to put all their time and energy into it and they get excited about it and they're motivated to learn all these things that they don't know that are getting in the way of making their projects even better. And so people learn more and more in order to make their project as awesome as possible. And that is what project-based learning is all about and why more and more, starting small, but if it's growing exponentially, it's growing, growing, it's kind of flat, but it's gonna take off, and it's starting, I think, kind of right here now. Um, it's highly motivating for people to learn. And, um, you know, one of the things I teach is soldering and electronics. It's, it's really not a big deal. I mean, but look, they're happy. You know, they're just making a blinky light there, but they're happy. And you know, even if these people never solder again, like this guy who made one of my brain machines, he may never make anything with electronics again, or maybe he will. Maybe he's gonna go off and become an electronics person because of it, who knows? But he's gonna have this sense of accomplishment and a sense of confidence that brings him to the rest of his life, and who knows what he'll do with that. So one of my latest kits is a music synthesizer kit. It's like 30 bucks. I tried to make it as cheap as possible. And this is an outgrowth of a project that I came across when I was in one lab in the University of Illinois where I went to university that didn't take military money. The only lab in the entire huge university of 40,000 people that didn't take military money. So we were doing cool things like music synthesizers and um, electronic, uh, electric vehicles. In fact, the person who started Tesla Motors was in this lab with me, a friend, my friend Martin. And no, it was not someone named Elon. It was my friend Martin. And Elon had the money and he stole it. But anyways, that's another story. Uh, in this lab, it, I had no idea that I could actually do things in, uh, uh, in electronics in a lab at university that I actually loved. So uh, my advisor there said, you should just do something you love. And I found music synthesis, and I made that into my master's thesis. And I actually started 
loving going to digital signal processing class, which I was loathing before, because in digital signal processing, I could learn what I needed to make my synthesizer awesome. School can be like that. It does not need to be like this. This is test taking. This is not learning. This is the results of being trained to take a test. Is this education? Yes. But is it good education? Can we do better? Hell yes. We can do way better than this. We can be much more motivated than sitting around having to do this kind of stuff. Project-based learning is really, really cool. School can look like this. And school is about, education is about a lifetime of learning. That's what school should be, is preparing all of us to live a life of learning, a, li a life we find fulfilling, a life that we find meaningful, doing things we love. And I really love that this place is called Lifelong Learning Institute. And so STEM comes along and starts taking over, but this is like huge corporations. This is a term from the US military because DARPA, which exists only for the uh, guaranteeing this US, the superiority of US military technology, is seeing that education isn't good enough for engineers to do that for them. Yeah, this is what it's about. And they have tons of money, they maximize their profits, they buy politicians, the US military is six times the rest of the world combined. Is this what we want for education? Are these the people we want to run our education? I don't think so. So anyways, people have added at least an A to it for art. This adds at least joy and creativity so that it's meaningful. And um, there are many, 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 many places around the world that are taking this into consideration. This is just one place I was recently at that's been around for about a year and a half, Steamhead. It's a hacker space for training teachers how to teach with Steam. Um, and people can do this kind of stuff. You know, there are all sorts of amazingly cool tools that are out there, like Lego Mindstorm. Um, but, you know, it's, it's incredibly expensive. So why isn't there an open source version of that? If I had more time, I'd be doing that, and maybe I will. There are also, you know, like this is just some kid decided he would like to teach electronics, and he created scrappy circuits. And for less than a dollar a person, you can learn electronics. Totally open source, of course. So the more we have of these open source tools so that educators all over the world can make use of them and share them and make them better and continue to share that around, it will help make more opportunities for more people. And that's really what we want. And it's up to us to do that, because if we don't do it, who will? So thank you. Great presentation, Mitch. Thank you so much.